Hello. The other day I read a nice, nice little story, which was something along the lines of, it's one of these apocryphal stories probably, but it doesn't matter. It, um, it, it, it shows a point. It was, a, it was meant to be um, a semi-rich people talking together up in North America. And it was a while back and one shop chain of shop owners talking to another chain of shop owners saying well aren't you going to put your profits into developing the chain and getting more shops and the other chain owner said no he says well what are you going to do he said well i'm going to get the profits and invest them in amazon stock and when you think about it say that was 10 years ago, what would have happened in the story that his shops have all been wiped out by Amazon, but he's made far, far more money by investing in Amazon equity, Amazon shares. And he can relax now, doesn't have to go to work, just have to own the shares as they go up, just sell them when he wants money and job done. Now, that links to another comment that was flying around the Financial Times for a while where first it started to do with housing and everyone knows that the price of housing is out of control generally in Western in the Western world but this was more about working where it's a variation on that theme even if you're a worker if you think you're going to get it, want to get any sort of a decent pension, you either have to do this house madness or you invest in companies like Amazon and Uber, perhaps Facebook. Um, but it, Amazon's the one that makes this point is you invest in the com company that's quite liable to be knocking your present employer dead and putting you out of work. Or you can work for Amazon, but invest in the damn thing as well, which is the worst investment advice you can ever have, is to invest in the company that you work in. But what the people, the workers, modern worker is now forced to do is invest in the worst possible things, the things that are really um, bad for the people, for them. You've got to, it's like, if you know robots are coming to take your job, you want to keep going through the financial times to find out where you can best invest in robots. So you can be at least a part owner of the robots that are going to put you out of work. The whole thing's really quite ridiculous. Anyway, this knocks me on to this article in The Guardian this morning, where the top two comments were interesting enough for um, a series on bullshit. Um, because as I say, most all talk is bullshit. Okay, I'll give you the top comment. Every few weeks this paper, that's The Guardian, has a good old sneer at wealthy people. It seems to keep a certain section of the readership happy. And that is interesting. That is kind of what most uh, media is all about. It's just about winding people up, but they, in a good way. I mean, people want to be wound up. That's what. That's why they read things and you watch YouTube videos and sport and things. They want to be wound up. Personally, I don't give a fuck how wealthy people become. What is more important is how we treat those in society with the weakest voices. Okay. An interesting fact in this debate is that 200 years ago, 90% of the people on this planet were living in absolute poverty, including many in this country. And it doesn't really matter what country that is coming from. There was no social state safety net. If you were poor, no one ch changed that for you. You either worked or you starved. In 1981, 50% of the people on this planet were living in absolute poverty. 
by 2011, that figure had fallen to just 17% and continues to fall. And throughout this period, the wealthy have become wealthier. And those changes have come about as the result of capitalist economies. So let's wind the clock forward another 30 years. Imagine that there is virtually no poverty in the world, which is the trend that we're on. What the fuck does it matter how much money the wealthiest have? Now, <coughs> now that's the top comment, but strangely, I think it's because the comment below has a hundred thumbs up more than it does. Chrissy Wilson uh, replies and quotes from the above, those changes have come about as a result of capitalist economies. Ugh. She writes, socialist-led demands for greater working protections, social security systems and public health care. So Chrissy thinks that socialist-led demands for greater work protections, social security systems and public health care have accounted for the drop from just about everybody being in poverty, 1981 half, and 2011 only 17% in absolute poverty, was because of socialism, where Cransley, who wrote the first comment, thinks it's capitalism. Obviously, it's neither one nor the other. It's a combination of things. But Cransley gets the mystic nod today because he's much more writer because when it comes to this 1981 50% and now uh, 15%, most all of that is China or the Far East. And basically they're working in factories. They do not have greater worker protections, social security system or public health care. They don't have any of that, but just having work in factories gets them out of absolute poverty as opposed to working in a paddy field which is absolute poverty. That's it for this video. Goodbye.